Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this we're going to the com video. We're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with CPU and GPU roadmaps from Team Red. AMD have a plethora of different products to be released in 2018 and 2019. These include, but not limited to, a refreshed version of their current architecture, Vega, and various... Uh, CPUs and platform changes, including Pinnacle Ridge, which is based upon the Summit Ridge architecture, still AM4, but offers a performance uplift. And then we'll finish the video with the i7-8700K, specifically some benchmarks which have leaked onto the internet. I guess you could say it's the first review, and this is about 10 days or so before reviews are supposed to go live, so I have a feeling someone's going to be in a bit of trouble. But First things first, AMD. So this information comes to us from Informatica Ciro, who then posted um, the information on their website and then also shared it with videocards.com, which is where I found it. So they assure us, um, Informatico, of course, that this information is genuine. Uh, videocards.com believe that this is genuine, at least according to what they've been hearing. Obviously, I can't speak to its validity, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's accurate, let's put it that way. So we'll start out with 2017 first. It begins, of course, with the introduction of Summit Ridge, which is 16 Zen threads on socket AM4. On the APU side, it's a Bristol Ridge, which is uh, featuring the Excavator CPU and Polaris GPU. Now here's where things get interesting. The roadmap then switches in 2018 to Pinnacle Ridge. Summit Ridge architecture... Performance Uplift, Socket AM4. Now, Performance Uplift is, well, let's just be totally honest here, not exactly the most insightful of links, but uh, this does coincide with another client roadmap that was released uh, a couple of months ago. And this one that tells us that we're going to see up to eight uh, Zen CPU cores on Pinnacle Ridge. It uses the AMD Pro Montgomery uh, chipset and is AM4 U. PGA. This is almost identical to the current uh, Summit Ridge stuff. However, they do stress, of course, that it does have some performance tweaks. And on the Raven Ridge side, which of course is APUs, up to eight Zen threads. So that means, of course, four cores with simultaneous multi threading, 11 Vega CUs, uh, socket AM4 on the desktop, and it switches from FP4 on the notebooks to FP5. Now here's where things get a bit crazy, and that is in 2019. So this appears to be when Zen 2 is introduced. Um, Zen 2 cores are going to be introduced at some point within 2019, and this is with Matassi, and Picasso uh, represents the APUs, which uh, says Raven Ridge architecture, power slash performance uplift, socket AM4 for desktop, and once again, uh, FP5 for notebooks. Now, this essentially means that AMD are tweaking their naming conventions, um, whereas with the graphics division that they're chasing the stars, as in you know space exploration, it appears that they're going to be looking at uh, famous painters when it comes to the CPU side of things. News on Vega 20's existence isn't new. In fact, this was leaked quite a while ago, but it appears now we actually have a basic window of when Vega 20 is going to appear on the on the store shelves. It looks like it's going to be some point in the third quarter. So what does this mean? Well, essentially, if you're considering waiting for a new refresh from AMD, and you're thinking, well, you know, maybe they're going to release it, I don't know, February. No, that's not the case. So if you want to buy a product and Vega doesn't quite do it for you, you've got one of two options. The first is to see how the custom variants of Vega are going to you know, treat us as customers, which, to be honest, there are a couple which are you know, starting to be reviewed already, which you can go ahead and check out. Or the other option, of course, is NVIDIA. Vega 20 is not going to be released once again until the third uh, quarter of 2018. And finally... We have Ryzen 5 Pro Mobile. Now, this is not a huge amount of information apart from a very basic uh, set of benchmarks which pit it against the Kiwi Lake i5. Um, what we have here is, of course, the Ryzen 5 
that absolutely dominates the Cable Lake in Sydney Bench. Um, considerably improved over the uh, 3D Mark 11 performance and idle power. It's mm, about even with KB Lake i5. Now, don't forget that the Ryzen 5 Pro mobile APU is indeed equipped with Vega graphics. So, obviously, this is uh, somewhat cheating, uh, especially when it comes to gaming benchmarks, because obviously it has a considerably faster processor, uh, sorry, graphics processor. Oh, um, one more note regarding Vega 20. You'll also notice that they're really pushing the uh, various frameworks, and this includes TensorFlow, uh, TensorFlow excuse me, uh, various workloads for natural language processing, higher order reasoning. In other words, AMD really want to get into the high end computing segment. Some reports are telling us that Vega 20 is very much designed with this in mind, although obviously we don't know that much about the specifications yet. Okay, next topic is the 8700K. I really don't think I need to tell you what the 8700K is at this point. It is, of course, based upon Coffee Lake and features 6 cores, 12 threads. So, the guys and girls, I don't know, over at EXP Review, or if you prefer, um, EX Preview, I'm not sure which is correct, uh, have managed to get hold of an 8700K and they've basically done a couple of different tests. The first set is with the processor uh, clocked at 4.5 gigahertz and they've also done the same with the 7800X and 7700K and the other one is basically just letting each processor run at their default clock speeds come what may. Now I'll go into the uh, 4.5 gigahertz tests first because I think they're quite interesting. I won't read out all the results because quite frankly I'll be here for way too long I'll link the full article in the video description, however. So, first things first, uh, the physics score definitely sees a rather large uptick. Uh, this is, of course, in 3D Mark Firestrike. You're looking around 6,000 points higher. Uh, this is in comparison to the 7700K, and it's a little bit faster even than the 7800X, which is probably going to piss some people off, I imagine. In fact, I have a feeling that some of these results will definitely piss some people off. Uh, and actually, one can argue the same thing for even Ashes of the Singularity. Uh, this is uh, actually quite impressive results. 48 frames per second at 1080. Um, that's compared to around 42 at the 7700K and around 43 and a half for the 7800K. Uh, all of the uh, game benchmarks essentially are considerably faster for the 8700K, once again with these numbers set to 4.5 GHz across each processor. And one can also see that in terms of synthetic results, it's very much identical. The 7-Zip, for example, absolutely dominates the 7700K. You're looking at a score of around 10,000 points higher. Um, uh, also, we can see that, yes, it does essentially keep up with uh, the 7800X. So it's actually somewhat possible that the 8700K might make some of the, um, the X299 lower core processors almost redundant, especially if it overclocks pretty damn well. Corona 1.3, you're looking at a, mm, I'm going to say 100,000 points improvement. This is raised per second, by the way. And yes, it does ever so slightly, once again, Pit the uh, pip rather the uh, 7800x to the post Cinebench, our friend and buddy. Uh, single thread results are essentially identical across all three processors. You're looking at one point difference separating the 7700k to the 7800x. However, multi thread is where things get a little more interesting. The 7800X and the 8700K basically identical 10 points of difference, although that's pretty much within the margin of error. However, these absolutely dominate. It's almost about 50% improvement compared to the 7700K. That's pretty impressive. However, what about when things are running at stock, right? That's where things get more interesting. Now, physics score. Are you looking around 15... Oh, sorry, 5,000 points uh, improvement, and yes, it does absolutely wreck the 7800X. So you're looking at around 2,000 points. Yes, I'm rounding things up, but let's just be honest. You kind of get where I'm going with this. 48 frames a second, once again, on the CPU-focused Ashes of the Singularity test. 
Um, that's very impressive. It's a six frames per second higher than the 7700K, or to put it another way, around seven frames higher than the 7800. And once again, we'll quickly uh, mosey on down to Cinebench. So Cinebench, here thing, where things get a little stickier, the 7700K and 7800X are almost identical, in fact, are identical when it comes to single thread performance. However, multi-thread performance, it only has around a 300 point gap um, between multi and, and uh, multi-thread on 7700K versus the um, uh, 8700K, uh, yeah, 8700K, whereas the two results for once just for once, the 7800X actually does slightly pull out in front. Now, as I said, this is not necessarily for an entire review. We will be reviewing Coffee They Can. I've actually done a preview of a motherboard. I'll link it in the video description if you so desire to check it out. Uh, this is just my opinion so far. Uh, honestly, it looks like this processor is pretty damn impressive. Um, it pretty much means that the uh, lower end processors on the X299 are essentially mute and pointless at this at this stage. With Ryzen, uh, I, I'm really looking forward to doing some uh, testing. For me, it depends. I'm hearing a lot of information. I've heard some whispers uh, from various board partners that 5 gigahertz shouldn't be too difficult at all um, with the 8700K. Uh, in fact, many are predicting it's going to be considerably higher than that, but that does depend on cooling and, of course, silicon lottery and what motherboard you've got, you get the idea. Either way, let's say you can get around 5 gigahertz on this. That's very bloody impressive. I'm, I'm not saying it will beat Ryzen in all tests. I, I don't think it will. But in some tests, it will certainly give it a run for its money. And for me, what really this shows is that the... The uh, 7800X, I wouldn't say it's pointless by any stretch of the imagination if you need those additional PCIe lanes, but honestly, in that case, I'd probably more push you towards one of the Threadripper processors. But uh, hey, that's just me. So I do, I do think that this CPU, especially if the rumors are uh, true, the next year Intel are going to push towards an 8-core processor. I do wonder what that's going to do with the HEDT market and how Intel are planning to kind of... Uh, deal with that because let's face it one of the main reasons people are going HEDT isn't necessarily IO in many cases it's just that they need that additional uh, CPU grunt uh, but hey we'll just have to wait and see with all of that said hopefully you've enjoyed the video I'll see you soon take care bye for now